Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Well, you know me. I, uh, I love Thunder Eggs. Now, there is one Thunder Egg bed in particular that I, I really like. Like these all, I've had some very good luck with these. And that would be the Lucky Strike Thunder Egg bed up in the Ochocos in Central Oregon. Well, I have one left, one left. And let me show you how good these can potentially be. Here's some that I think are on the mid upper end of what the Lucky Strike bed can produce. Look at that. That is a very nice thunder egg. Even some of the little ones, look at that little one. That is a very good thunder egg. So we got this little guy all the way up to, uh, this one is probably the more impressive one that I've ever cut. And you can see right here, there is just a lot going on in it. Fortification, mossy bits, uh, you know, water line, quartz pocketing. Like it is just very, very cool. A very good double, double thunder egg. Well, last one. This is my last one. Um, so I want to go back. However, you know, I mean, it is private. It is a patented claim and their frequency in which they're open is low and it may not just work out. Uh, so, you know, um, I'm going to cut this last guy here and hope for the best. Now, if you watched my video about determining the best cut placement on thunder eggs uh, using pressure ridges, that doesn't really apply to lucky strike eggs. Now in the perfect world, uh, I would have marked the, the up <laughs> orientation, but that didn't happen. So uh, we're going to do the next best thing, which is to cut, giving it the best exposure. Now, if we look at this thunder egg here, um, we got some multiple lumpy bits. Now these could just be like, rhyolitic sphere, spherols, spheroids, <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, so the placement here that I want to do is we're going to cut this way, right around in that. And it's heavy. It's heavy. There's no cracks on it. So I'm hoping for the best. I'm going to get this thing chucked up in the Slabosaurus. Cutting thunder eggs is kind of universally a problem because they are round and while well, you want, you want your cut right down the middle. So this right here is the Slabosaurus, uh, well, I guess slabbing fixture, but I use it in this orientation to cut things like thunder eggs. And you can see here, I put a little white line on there and that is to help line me up in my saw of where I would like to cut. You can kind of draw that all the way around, get a nice good cut there. Um, and this is just a really smart little tool you know, uh, it, it makes things like this so much easier. And if you look at my vertical clamping vise, uh, there'd be no way to get that nice cut on this. So uh, this is a very good tool and it's not coming out. All right, let's head over to the saw. See here how I have this all mounted up. My saw is set up to cut one inch every seven minutes. So that's probably, I don't know, 35 minutes or so ish. We'll uh, get this thing running. Well, let's see how we did here. I uh, heard the saw drop oh, maybe 10 minutes ago. So it's been sitting here, let all that oily mist sink down. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's actually kind of interesting. So yeah, we got lots of, uh, I guess, mossy plume in there. So the next step is to get that side and that side in some cat litter and suck all of that oil off.
this is where we're at with it. Not, we got some cloudiness. This is the machine that will be hopefully removing that. This is my homemade carpet wheel. It is a slow speed buffer. I'll be using white optical grade cerium oxide. And uh, when we are done here, this should be a uh, very, very clear and shiny. And uh, it'll be like looking in a mirror, a better mirror, better than that, way better than that. Putting more pressure on this back edge so it doesn't catch. That's why I'm kind of rotating it a little. I think we're pretty good. I'm going to go a little bit longer though for a good measure. A real important step is putting the rocks that you take off directly into some water and you don't let that polish dry at all because if you let it dry well you're, you're going to be hating life so i'm going to go get these all scrubbed up and clean and we'll check them out these are my thunder eggs from the lucky strike which i have deemed acceptable over the years i've cut and polished a lot and i have given away most of them. I still have some that uh, just need polishing, but uh, these are ones that make me happy, right? And this is my last lucky strike right here. And that is what we look like. Overall, I am uh, medium happy with it. I think it's kind of an interesting one. Not super great, not super bad. Uh, a little on the crumbly side, as you can see, like right there okay and that is that is a problem with all lucky strikes okay so you know we're pretty good here we're pretty good that is a problem though with all lucky strikes the rhyolite the rhyolite here is crumbly and at any moment in the polishing process it feels like it could just peel right off and scratch your thunder egg it can happen on 80 grit 800 grit the cerium oxide wheel doesn't really matter. And uh, something like that can happen. That can happen. And that is not ideal. Um, versus this guy here, we're a little we're nicer, we're nicer, okay? You know, and I mean, I guess I'm probably my worst enemy here. Um, I'm sure some people would be happy with that. I'm not super happy with it. This one will get repolished. We're still got that like little milkiness to it. I would grade this a C plus or a B polish, as would be uh, most of my uh, Lucky Strike Thunder eggs back here. Um, they're just they're a challenge. They are a challenging Thunder egg to uh, to polish up, you know. But let's look at some of these ones. I really like this one here. It's kind of, let's turn the light on. I like this one here. You know, we've got some nice color in it. I think it's quite lovely to look at. This guy's got that water line, little druzy pocket. I, I really like the white in this. Kind of looks like Texas, I guess. <laughs> Uh, but this was a, a nice thunder egg. This one was a little hard to polish up. We have a lot of moss in it. A lot of moss, which uh, can make make it difficult. You know, uh, moss doesn't generally want to take a nice polish. 
This one, I believe, uh, was just kind of a broken face, and I face cut it. A lot of blue in that. I like that one. We got blue. Let's see, focus. Yeah, we got some blue. Nice moss in it. Semi acceptable polish. Somewhat acceptable. Eh. None of them are like flawless, flawless, you know. But that's uh, that's we're working with natural stuff here, you know. Uh, a couple of my big ones. They have a lot going on in them. Very nice. And then, of course, these big guys back here. I wish there was a... I need to get some stands for some of these. You know. We got Waterline. We saw this one. We got a lot going on in there. We'll have to uh, return back to the Lucky Strike at some point in the future and do some more collecting. Some more collecting. Well... Thanks for coming by, everybody, hanging out with me. Looking at me, uh, looking at the, the last Lucky Strike here, I would recommend that as a location, a fee dig site, if you're so interested. And with that said, we will leave this one here. Go check out the website, currentlyrockhunting.com. And a big thanks to all of the people that support this project over on Patreon.